All right, good morning. We are at Michael's. I forgot that Moon Pop was in the car. We're at Michael's Arts and Crafts. My car is very dirty. So I had to come get some watercolor paper. I ordered some online, but it hasn't shipped. Michael's is actually open. So we're gonna go out here. We're gonna not touch nothing. And we're gonna get us some paper. All we doing is touching paper, dog. That's it. Michael. Is that really the only one? <laughs> All right. So this is all they had for arches. I guess we can explain. So I paint with a lot of watercolor and a lot of gouache. So normally I paint on big pieces of paper. See it like this. Painting I never finished. Dragons. I don't even know if Michael's fucking even carries the big pieces. But they had this big ass block, which I do like the blocks. I used to paint on these all the time, kind of at the mercy of this size. I can make it smaller, but that's okay. I like the size. This is all on a block. You have to cut each sheet off. I'll show you, hold on. Watercolor paper comes in different weights and uh, heat pressings. This is cold press, which is pretty much all I paint on. And it's 140 pound, which is also pretty much all I paint on. So there's this top layer sheet. You have to cut this off. You'll see like back here, right there. So you want to take a razor and kind of slice that off to reveal the paper. I'm just going to rip it just to show you because the black paper doesn't really matter. And so now we have our sheet watercolor paper and then you can paint it on here and then same thing there's a little knot you can kind of cut out each sheet now I will tend to usually cut it off the block before I start painting because there's many times back in the day I'd finish a painting try to cut this off be impatient or something and then end up sliding you know, have the razor go slice half the painting off so I don't do that anymore I tend to just cut it right off <laughs> and then paint on. These are expensive. These fucking things are, there's only 20 sheets and this was $85, which is overpriced because Michael's just taxed. But also on my phone, I just went to michaels.com or whatever their fucking website is. They got like a 50% off coupon. It was 40 bucks. Staying thrifty out, out in the street. 20 sheets, 20 painting. We got this. Easy. No problem. Let's go. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do for the early part of the day. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna try and come up with what I'm gonna paint, size, all those things. Alex went to the dispensary, which is still open. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and be productive and creative while all this is happening and not just play Call of Duty. Which is actually pretty reminiscent of my past. When I was younger, younger tattooer, I would sit in my office or my desk in my, on my days off and I would paint Flash. Flash is the shit that hangs on the wall of tattoo shops. I would paint Flash when I would get, and smoke weed, when I would get too high or bored or frustrated, I'd play a little bit of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. I'd take a couple of first place crowns, free for all, usually with a knife in class. You know, I'd come back to painting. So to our roots we go, painting, painting, painting. We have a blank sheet and a blank sheet of paper to some people, most people, all people at different times can be intimidating, you know? I mean, what do you do? Everyone is always asking me where I get my ideas from, how I come up with this shit. I need something to put this fucking thing. You know, I produce a lot of stuff. I produce a lot of clothes. I make a lot of art, draw constantly. And people ask me where the ideas come from. And the answer really is I don't know. It comes from kind of all over. It comes from books. You know, I buy a lot of little books. Uh, this is a Japanese book on just like letter shapes, kind of different letters. Chinese books on tigers, things like that. Just to, this type of stuff helps you just know how to draw it. You know, like properly. And you know, sometimes you get stuck drawing. You're like, what does a tiger, how does a tiger's arm move or leg move? So you need reference to help you. You don't really use the reference as a direct copy or anything usually. I mean, sometimes it can be helpful. Depends on what you're doing. You know, like if you're gonna draw something from scratch that you don't need to draw from scratch, you probably shouldn't. Like if you are taking a piece of something, let's say like, let's say this shirt, right? I obviously took the Supreme logo first and then altered it. I didn't sit there and draw the Supreme logo from scratch. That would be really stupid. Reappropriate things as you as you feel. But I, really, inspiration comes from everywhere. I mean, traveling, I get a lot of inspiration when I go to Japan. But my interest, I'm very interested in Japanese, Japanese iconography. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I'm super interested in all that stuff, which just kind of feeds it. But I don't really have this one source of inspiration. I see something and I, I like it and it inspires me to do something else. It really just comes from being alive and being involved and moving. You know, if you sit in one little room, it's just gonna this is gonna be a little harder but if you sit in one little room and don't do anything you know no outside anything your inspiration pool might run dry nothing to take from you need interaction scenery changes things like that for your mind to step to the next block so a lot of times I'll beat myself up for not producing especially when I'm in Japan I'll see stuff while I'm out and I want to it makes me want to go home and paint or draw but I'm out and I'm exploring so what I've learned as I get older is a lot of my times I'm doing research and development I'm soaking a lot of stuff in and then later is 
it comes this whole dump, dump it all out. However long it takes to dump all that out uh, is generally how long it takes for me to plan another trip somewhere, go somewhere, you know, shake things up somehow. So there's still no answer for where inspiration comes from, I don't think. I think it just hits you. I think you're an antenna and you gotta have a clear signal and when the signal comes, phew, you gotta strike. You know, you gotta either take the note, put it in your phone as an idea, fucking strike right then. Drop everything and strike. Strike, like a snake. Didn't do anything last night except finish Love is Blind. It's the worst, best show ever. It's actually just the worst. Don't watch it. Trust me, don't, don't watch it. We ended up ordering dinner. This place, uh, Mod Market, which is actually usually pretty good. Last night it was kinda, it's kinda bunk. But it's okay. It happens, I didn't wanna cook. Today, we will cook. It's take time. Not really, actually. It's marinating this bad boy real quick. Serrano honey on these hoes, dog. All right, we're gonna put this in the fridge for like four hours. About four hours. All right, we'll not pass StockX authentication, but we got hand soap, some Ajax, disinfectant wipes. Let's take a break. Take a break. Let's make daddy take breaks. And Alex is rolling a joint. Hall passes on. I actually rolled one already. Why are you two joints? Because there is leftover. We're not I... sharing because of the social distancing? Yes. All right, five and a half hours later, I've earned some time on Warzone. Paint reward, but actually what I'm probably gonna do first is edit the last two days of footage. We got two days, two paintings down. Let's we'll see how long we can keep the momentum going. I hope y'all are good out there. See you um, soon. Day three, or four now, of the apocalypse. Going back out into civilization to try and do some food shopping. And this evening, Brandy will be cutting my hair. Her first haircut ever. Look at this. Shopping is done. Got a lot so we can go out a little bit less now. 
That being said, folks, we got a lot of different things. We're not out here hoarding fucking toilet paper and eggs. We got about 30 eggs left. All these people taking all this shit off the shelves is fucking up everything for the rest of us who talk about social distancing. It's all good till you need food. Then it's fucking jumping. It's a little, little weird, but um, yeah. Here we are. Now, uh, it's been a few days more in quarantine. Bottle of 16-year-old Lagavulin. Cracking that open in a little bit. This wine's called Josh. I'm gonna get one called Ted, and then I'll have my two best friends' wines. Why don't you tell them the technique that you're gonna use and explain a little <laughs> of what you're planning on doing here. I mean, however it ends up is how it ends up. You're not allowed oh, to shake your shit, head. Oh, shit, I almost fell backwards. We have a nice little herbal mist going here. It's like a lot of pressure with the cameras. Oh, no pressure, huh? Oh, but I have to turn the little herbal thing off for the the toilet. You want to unplug the toilet? No, leave the bidet. We cannot right. lose the bidet at this point. No, I could care less. You're the one who's going to have to live with this. I, I don't care. You think I'm wearing a hat? I'm not, though. If you fuck this up, I'm wearing it chopped up. But I'm just finding the line to start from here and go up. Are you kidding? What? Stop moving! I will cut your fucking... Have my barbers I can move. <laughs> Point it at the back, make sure it's focused, give a little... No, that's okay. We're I just, still gotta do the other... Step. Yeah, no, I gotta do fine. the... Alright, let's actually shoot it from the back. Do you remember your last fucked up haircut? Yeah, but that was from a barber that you pay for. This is just getting started, folks. It's gonna get good. <laughs> Let's leave it like, like that. Oh boy. It's gonna look good for the podcast tomorrow. Oh, Brand's got the grip down now like a pro. There she goes, really getting that fade in. This is exactly the break I needed from Hulu. Are you still gonna like, oh yeah, the fade's looking good though from this. great, I wish my barber friends were up in here. No. So first, what was this? What was the no. point of it? That was to set up a line or look at this hair. <laughs> yeah, there you go, looking good. I say we leave it like this, just take that all the way around. What are you gonna, you're gonna fade down into the beard too? Ernesto Quarantino with the at home haircut. Hey, this is a great bonding moment. We've been doing a lot of bonding moments. Um, this. <laughs> All right, here. You got a vacuum dooring it? You're that much of a need freak. All right, here we are. We've got barrettes in both sides. We're waiting. We've got this hairline. Wait, this one me. here. This one is like, starts way up here. It is at a slant. Oh. Like slopes down and this one is still all here. Good point. Oh, I didn't finish. That's why. <laughs> Tell her to even up the right side of the left. Yeah, we're not gonna tell her anything. We don't wanna put the pressure on. You know, I don't know what I'm doing here. You have no idea what you're gonna do. You have no idea how to get it to match the other side. We're gonna have to break out that scotch in a minute. Brandy just looked at both sides of my hair and said, I don't know what to do. Brandy's <laughs> a little bit stuck, not sure what the next move is gonna be. Oh, here we are. Well, everyone else's hair was a lot shorter in the videos. Well, I'm just gonna go. Alright. Some what? Some, the bread comes out, the magic is unleashed. You gotta clean the beard up too, to get that look. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, no, we're gonna. I can do it with like, scissors. No, but. What are you doing? Nothing. Sorry. Well, I don't think that it looks bad enough that you need to shave it. So I think that was the goal here. Yeah, now you, fade, now you make a ramp with it. I mean, I feel like I have a little work to do right here. Just a little, little more. Okay.